Hi guys, Justin here. Today I'm going to discuss the top five anime I'm looking forward to in the summer 2017 anime season. I won't be talking about anime that cross over from the spring, so all of the things on this list will be brand new anime this season. I'll post another video, and it's going to be really long, around 25 minutes, about all of the anime that I plan on watching, but most of which I'll probably drop this season. Anyway, once again, top five anime, I'll mention the anime name, a small summary, and why I'm looking forward to it. Note that the anime featured in this list aren't in any particular order. That being said, cue the intro. Alright, so welcome to the top five anime I'm looking forward to in the 2017 anime season once again. So, the first anime on my list is Fate Apocrypha. This setting is a parallel world to Fate Stay Night, where the Greater Grail mysteriously disappeared from Fuyuki after the Third Holy Grail War. After many years of silence around the same time as the Fifth Holy Grail War ha would have happened, the Igd Millennia, and I don't know if I pronounced that right, oh god, Anyway, this family of magi openly declares their secession from the mages' association and that they, they are in possession of the grail. The association dispatches 50 magi to retrieve it, and all but one are instantly slaughtered by a mysterious servant. The one remaining manages to activate the reserve system of the greater grail, allowing for the summoning of 14 servants in total. In the city of Trifis, two factions will fight for the control of the sacred relic each of them possessing their own team of seven servants. The Black Faction, whose members are part of the Igd Millennia, protecting the Grail, and the Red Faction, whose members were sent by the Mages' Association, trying to, t uh, trying to take the Grail back. For an event of this scale, the Grail itself summon summons its own servant, the Holy Ruler, to oversee the conflict. This marks the start of the Great Holy Grail War. So... For those of you who haven't seen the Fate Stay Night series, come on, you're really missing out. But I'll sort of explain what's going on, right? So there's the Holy Grail Wars that happen every few years. And so the Holy Grail just mystically appears and people in the people are chosen to fight for this Holy Grail. And they're given these servants, which they have to summon. And they fight for them as they search for the Holy Grail. Who Last one standing wins, of course. So anyway, once again... It's another anime from the Fate series. Need I say more? Need I re Do I really need to explain why I'm excited for this? Because Fate is just great. I love Fate. Um, one thing, though. Um, Fate Unlimited ba Blade Works and all of the Fate series with the good action scenes were done by UFO Table. And UFO Table is really good with action scenes like that. So the problem is... UFO table is not doing Fate Apocrypha. I'm not, I don't remember who is, but whoever is doing it, they need to step up their game in terms of animation because, God, UFO table does great animation when it comes to the fight scenes, especially in Fate Unlimited Blade Works. Oh, God, it's great. But I'm still looking forward to it. It's another anime in the Fate series, so it's going to be awesome either way. At least I hope it will be. All right, now that that's done, let's go to the next anime on the list, Katsugeki Tōken Danbu. The year is 1863. The tumultuous samurai era is coming to an end. Japan is split between pro-shogunate and anti-shogunate factions. The fate of the world is threatened as an army of historical revisionists are sent from the future to alter the course of history. In order to bring these forces down and protect the real history, two sword warriors, spirits who are swords brought to life by Saniwa, the sage or the master, rush to Edo with a lively gang of warriors to confront the invaders. I wasn't initially as interested in, in this, seeing that it was just another adaptation of a game, but I will admit the time travel aspect was really interesting to me, and also the animation is done by UFO Table. And after watching the first episode, their fight scenes once again, the animation, the fluidity with which they create these fight scenes just drew me in, and I must say that I am on the hype train for this anime. 
They start off with the cliche chase scene and stuff, and once again, the time travel thing isn't new, and time revision isn't new. But I must admit, the animation is done very well, and the story is still interesting. So I must admit, I w am really hyped for this anime, and I'm curious as to see where they progress. So, hype! All right, I'm really looking forward to this next one. This one's on... If I put this list in any order, this would be, at, if not at the top, somewhere near the top. Anyway, this next anime is called Made in Abyss. The Abyss is the last unexplored place in the world. Strange, wonderful creatures roam within, and it is full of precious relics that humans can't create, at least not presently. Those that dare to explore the depths are known as cave raiders. An orphan girl named Riko lives on the rim. Her dream is to become a cave raider, just like her mother, and solve the mis mysteries of the cave system. One day, Rico starts exploring the caves and discovers a robot who resembles a boy. So upon watching the trailers for this, I was absolutely hyped for this anime, and I still am. So the visuals look stunning, and the mysterious music at the beginning of the trailer, at least the first trailer, really drew me in. The lack of dialogue at the very beginning also creates an air of tension that really draws you in as well. The frame then focuses on a child with robot appendages lying in the middle of the grass. A blonde-haired girl walks over to him, then they drop the first set of dialogue, which was simple but elegant. Where did this kid come from? Then the music becomes more upbeat. And the trailer tells us the names of the two characters. The blonde-haired girl is Diko, and the half-robot kid is Regu. And Diko somehow reactivates this robot kid. What I like about this is that they don't explain all of this through some monologue like a lot of trailers do. They do it through the dialogue. And I also love how that's the only part they really explained. Since now I want to know more about how this happened. How did she reactivate? How did she end up finding him? What was she doing beforehand? I mean, the, the summary says that she was exploring the caves, but what exactly was she doing? And I'm really curious. There's that air of mystery around it. Anyway, the trailer then moves to a beautiful shot of the town that she lives in, as Rico shows it to Degu. And if I remember correctly, she says that the name of the town is Osu? I don't remember. Um, anyway, whatever the case, they... They panned that shot beautifully, and they, then they zoom out to show the giant abyss in the center of the city. And when you think the trailer is over, the trailer then moves to a frame that essentially dives into the abyss, further solidifying the mystery surrounding it. This combination of mystery, limited dialogue, and beautiful shots just really took me, and it's one of the number one things I'm looking for forward to this season. All right, so next up is Isekai Shokudo. At the bottom floor of a building with a cat signboard in the shopping district near the office street, there lies a cafeteria called Yoshoku no Nekoya. Open for 50 years, this restaurant has satisfied the various salarymen from nearby offices. Despite it being called a Western cuisine cafeteria, it also provides other varieties of menus. For the people of this certain world, it's their one and only special cafeteria. There is, however, one secret to Nekoya. The cafeteria is closed to the public every Saturday in order to make way for special guests. While this, also, this is also another isekai anime, I'm actually quite interested in this because it doesn't seem to be another trash haremu anime. And after watching the first episode, I can confirm that it's not another trash haremu anime, even if the OP kind of does sound like it's from one. It's also not a cliche shonen anime following a hero's journey storyline. So far, the story follows a few characters, the first of which is the restaurant owner who actually made a contract with this dragon lady, the other character that we're following, in the isekai, the other world. So the restaurant doesn't just serve people here, but it also serves people in that other world. Finally, the third character is a half-demon who was recently fired from her job as a waitress for reasons she'll explain in the episode. It's kind of weird. Just watch the first episode. The least immature of these characters seems to be the demon girl. And not in a bad way, but she just seems the least mature, and so I think she has the most to grow. And I think the story will follow her as she develops and gets used to this magic restaurant. However, 
it also seems to follow the restaurant owner and the dragon lady with equal prominence. So it's refreshing to see the interactions of more mature characters in conjunction with the less mature waitress. And I thoroughly enjoyed the first episode, and I look forward to seeing how it develops and exploring not just the people who, uh, who they follow, but also the customers at the restaurant as well. That would be interesting to see. All right, so the last anime on my top five anime to look forward to, summer 2017 anime list, is Uchiage Hanabi, Shita Kara Miruka, Yoko Kara Miruka. In English, this means fireworks. Should we watch them from the bottom or should we watch them from the side? This film is set on one day during summer vacation and follows a group of boys who try to view a fireworks display from the town lighthouse to see if they look round or flat when viewed from the side. Meanwhile, one of the boys, Norimichi, receives an invitation from his crush, Nazuna, to run away with her. Now, this isn't an anime series. This is actually an anime movie. And it's actually based on another movie, a live-action film that was filmed in 1993 or released in 1993, something like that. But I'm getting those romance drama vibes that you get from movies like Five Centimeters Per Second or Kimi no Nawa. And I am a sucker for these types of anime. What particularly interests me is the line that keeps playing throughout the trailer. Moshi mo, mo ichido ano hi o yari naosetara. And that means if I could once again redo what happened that day. And that feeling is universal, the desire to redo something in our past. I want to see how they develop this theme and how they, that theme influences the characters of this, series, of this film and how they'll influence me, my emotions, through that theme. I'm actually really hyped for this. Once again, I am a sucker for this type of an- these types of anime, and I hope to experience the feels through this as much as I did with Kimi no Nawa or um, Five Centimeters Per Second. So hopefully this will be really good, and I'm really excited. Anyway, that's it for my top five anime to look forward to in summer 2017 anime list. And with that being said... Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Everything changes.